Hey guys, I got something pretty cool for you today. I think you're really gonna like it. The new Animal Crossing game has taken the gaming world by storm. Seriously, like every single person I follow on Twitch has been playing this game lately. It's my first time ever playing an Animal Crossing game and I absolutely love it. Like I wish I would have played it back in the day on GameCube and everything. It's absolutely incredible. If you haven't played it yet, go check it out. Not an ad. So since I've been loving this game so much, I decided that it would be pretty cool to make an Animal Crossing themed alert. I started out with a Tom Nook follow alert, but if there's enough interest in these type of alerts, I would definitely like to make some more for you guys soon. Be sure to stick around to see how I made the alert and how to set it up properly in your alert box. If you like this video and the alert that I made for you, be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe and ring that bell so that you're notified when I post more videos. I will be posting some more designs very soon. Just a quick reminder that I do stream on Twitch every Tuesday and Thursday at twitch.tv slash bbgun. So come drop me a follow on there and check out a live stream, hang out while we play some games or work on some designs. For coffee and dog pics, and some other not quite as important things, you should follow me on Twitter at It's BB Gun and on Instagram at It's BB Gun. I'll put links for all of those down in the description below. All right, so my idea is to make a kind of flat art image of Tom Nook from Animal Crossing, and he's gonna pop up, wave, and that'll be a follow alert. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm just using the curvature path tool in Photoshop to trace around the shape of Tom Nook's face. It makes it a lot easier to get the shape pretty close to right, okay? Um, now I didn't do that for anything else. I figured the shape of his face was probably the most important part to get pretty close. So I just wanted to make sure I got it right. Now I'm outlining the um, shape of his mask, right? He's a raccoon. He's got this cool mask on his face. And I just, I spent a lot of time trying to make it look pretty dang good. This is my first time really using the curvature path tool for this much of a project. I usually, I, like I've drawn emotes before and stuff, but I usually freehand those. I have a um, Wacom drawing pad that I usually use. I use the brush tool and everything and I draw it. But for this, I don't, I don't know why I decided to go with the curvature path tool. I think it, I think it worked out pretty well in the end. Now I drew his nose and now I'm working on his eyes. He's got, I wanted to draw him like with a, um, like the happy winking face that's very popular in the game. So I drew his like eyelids shut and then now I'm adding like the crescent moon type shape for his like eyes, showing his eyes are closed, right? And I just thought that that would make the alert super adorable is to have his eyes like that. So copy, mirror the eye so you have it on both sides. And I added a um, shirt now. So I decided just to go with a solid color on the shirt. I made it kind of the color of the leaf, a little bit more of a pale blue, I believe, but um, I didn't think there was a need to go into the detail of his shirt. I just figured I'd make it a simple solid color, add the lapel and stuff. I just, I wanted to keep it simple, but still keep it to where you would know who he was. I hope that makes sense. Um, so I'm just working on the shirt here. Um, it was a little bit of a pain, I'm not gonna lie. It was a little bit of a pain to get the corners of the shirt to not be just this big round blob. But I spent a lot of time on it and it ended up looking pretty dang good. Now I'm working on the ears. Um, just use the ellipse tool, drew the ears, um, put the little inside of it, matched it pink to the reference image that I had. Use the brush tool to add the little brown details. Okay, so now that I've imported my Photoshop file into my After Effects project, I've opened up the composition and I actually decided not to include the pants and the legs in the final alert. So I'm actually I actually decided to cut it off right about here at the waist so that he's just gonna pop up a little bit above the edge of the um, screen wave and then disappear. Okay so that I, I decided to change that so right now you, you guys see pants and legs but it's not in the final alert. So the first thing I did was I came in here and I edited the rotation of the left sleeve and left arm. So the first thing I had to do was for the um, sleeve here, I had to change the anchor point to be right here, right where the shoulder would be, right? Okay. And then I made the anchor point for the left arm in the same location as the anchor point for the sleeve. That way, 
once you reach the animation, they move together, right? Okay. So after I did that, I went to the right arm and right sleeve, and I did the I did the same thing, except for obviously I changed I made the anchor point the shoulder, okay? It, but I'm making them um, rotate up. So he's waving with his left hand. And as he's waving with his left hand, his right hand's just kind of dipping. Then we um, we made the entire head, every layer on the head, I made it into one layer so that I could animate rotation on this as well a lot easier. Instead of having to apply rotation to every single layer, rotating it, making sure the anchor points all lined up. I just converted it all to one layer and made it a lot easier to work with. So we just kind of made it, made it tilt a little bit with the wave. So everything's just kind of one motion, right? Now what I decided to do was, as you see, he waves, pauses, waves again, and the total alert is about six seconds long. Not about. The total alert is six seconds long. So that is that is the entire waving animation. It's just a quick two, two wave right there. And then um, we take this composition, put it in another composition. I know it's a little confusing, but I've done it like this for a little while just because if I ever want to change my actual alert entrance and exit animations, it's a lot easier to do it this way than it is if I wanted to apply like a fade in on every single layer in this composition itself. So I save, I save this as a composition, I insert it into another composition as its own layer, and then I can apply entrance and exit animations for the entire alert as a whole. I hope that makes sense. I'm having the alert pop up here. It's just popping up to right, right above, right up. It's just popping up to right above the belt, the pants, okay? So he's just barely popping above the screen. He's gonna wave and it's gonna be adorable. <laughs> All right, so he pops up, waves, waves again. It was a little early. And then the it just fades away. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna set up your stream elements or your stream labs or whatever you're using for your follow alerts. And you're going to have the text appear next to him on this side or above him, but I, I designed it so it would be easily shown on the this side of him, the right side of him, okay? And you're gonna set that text to appear around one second. So it's gonna be about a one second text delay and then it's gonna start disappearing about a quarter of a second before the alert is done. I'm gonna show you guys how to set up this alert in Stream Elements, but you can do the same thing in Stream Labs. You're gonna to go to My Overlays, which is this page, and then you're gonna to go to Create Blank Overlay. You wanna set the resolution to Custom. We're gonna set it to 540 by 300 to match the composition. So the first thing you're gonna do is click on the widgets and then add an alert box. Gonna go to position and style down here and set the width of the widget and the height of the widget to match the composition size. Yeah, so you're gonna click on the cogwheel to edit the follower alert settings. You're gonna change your video. Now this is where you could click to upload a video, but I already have it uploaded, so I'm just gonna click submit. There's no sound on this video, but I'm gonna set the volume down to zero anyway, just out of habit. I'm going to move the sound of the sound alert up to 60% to test it. Upload sound. I already have it uploaded. This is the sound that I have provided. You guys can use whatever sound that you want with your alert. This is just the one that I've provided in case you want to use it. Now it's very important that you select text over image. Okay, it's gonna help us set up the text positioning exactly how we want it. The alert message I'm just gonna change to be welcome, comma, enter, and then the person's username followed by an exclamation point. You can, again, you can change this to say whatever you wanted to say. I just like to keep it simple. Alert duration needs to match the video duration, which is six seconds. Then we go to text settings. And then definitely want to keep it centered. Bold is good. I always keep a text shadow on it. You guys can look up what all these different numbers mean. You can play around with them. I personally don't use highlight text animation, but again, you can if you want to. And then I personally always set this highlight text to be the same color as my regular text. So now we're gonna scroll back up 
and click on the advanced tab. So this is where we set our margins for our text. So we want Tom Nook to pop up on the left side here and we want our text to come in on the right of him. So knowing that this composition is 540 by 300, I'm going to set my top margin to about 200. This is just a starting point. It's an iterative process. Once you play it, you can see where it is and move it around. And again, with the left, I'm going to set it to about 250. Okay, close that. And then we're going to go to animation settings. I already included enter and exit animations on the video itself. So you don't have to add any here. You can keep these as none. But for text animations, I like to have it fade in and fade out. But again, you can set those to whatever you want. Duration, I'm just going to make it a little faster. You guys can play around and see what you guys like. Now, it's very important that you set the text appearance delay to one second. That way, the text starts to appear right as Tom Nook is starting to wait. And the text disappearance offset is going to be about a quarter of a second. And that's when I set him to start fading away. Okay, so we're going to go to this bell here now, click emulate follower event, and see what we think. Okay, so right away, I definitely want to move the text up a little bit and over a little bit. Over to the left. So we're going to go back to our text settings. Put the top of the text at, let's try 170. So see, now it moves it. It moves the faded text as you're typing, but it just, it's not shown there for some reason at the beginning. Let's try 225. Save it again and then emulate follower event. Okay. And that's pretty good. You can play around with this text. You could move it a little more to the left if you want. You could put it above them if you want. You could put it wherever. This is just where I decided that I wanted to put it was on the right side. And now I'm just going to show you what the final product would look like over some gameplay. There you go. It's popping up in the bottom left hand corner and people think that your stream is adorable. I hope you like the design everyone. It only costs 300,000 bells. Just kidding, it's completely free to use. <laughs> the download link is in the description below, as well as a link to join my Discord channel, where I will be posting this design in the free designs channel, as well as all future and past designs. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.